Okay, today uh, I'm going to do a video of my sledgehammers, or well, I call my sledgehammers. I've got several hammers. These are my uh, array of sledgehammers. I have, I suppose, be pushing the vocabulary to call this little fellow a sledgehammer. It's a two-pounder, but the shape of the head is like a sledgehammer, so I'll refer to it as that. This one is a four-pound hammer. The one in the middle is a six-pound hammer, and the two on the right are both eight pounds. They do make 10, 12, 16, and I have seen a 20 in my time. I do have a 16-pounder. I didn't get it out now. Uh, the 16-pounder I've, I've had for decades and I think the last time I used the 16-pounder was uh, somewhere in the late 1980s when we were driving a, a track pin in a D8 bulldozer. So you don't use the 16-pounder very often. Uh, the 20-pounder, I've just seen one in the past. I've never had the opportunity to, to really need one. Uh, the 12-pounder uh, is sometimes useful. Uh, but very few times have I seen when you need anything heavier than an 8-pound hammer. Uh, I have seen 10-pounders, although they're not real common, and nor is the 6-pounder. Uh, I've never seen a 14-pound hammer. I don't know if they make one or not, uh, or ever did make one, but I've never seen one. The hammer on the left, the small one, is uh, the head. Uh, I put the handle in that. I think... Uh, I put handles on all of these hammers, uh, except the the one, the fourth one over, and that one I had to, I think I did a video of uh, how to repair the handle in it. <clears throat> the other handles I bought and put in the, the hammer heads. Uh, I still find a few hammer heads for five dollars, and occasionally they want a little more depending on what it is. Uh, and the only hammer, the only hammer handles I've been able to find that's decent are about nine dollars now. So, wood handles are getting rather expensive. The hammer on the left, the head is made in China, uh, so the not knocking anything made in China necessarily, but uh, the modern metals that uh, tools are coming that you buy anymore, uh, the metal is not really as high quality as the uh, older tools. The older tools, the metal is better. The uh, newer newer hammer heads will shatter. Uh, sorry about the dogs barking here. There, there's six of them running around, so if they get too bad, I'll turn this thing off and start over. Um, this one is a war wood, uh, the second one. The one in the middle is a, uh, a war wood, and the one uh, the older handled one there is a Stanley and the one on the right is made in Japan. So those are my sledgehammers. I thought I'd do a video to show uh, why you need several different sizes hammers with different lengths handles. Okay, in this section I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the physics. What you're interested in with a hammer is trying to create a force to affect some sort of either breaking something or driving something or loosening something. Um, I have here a little, not any numbers, but it's math. Mass times velocity is momentum. So multiply mass times the velocity and you get momentum and if you this triangle in physics means is red delta and it means change in it's a I think a Greek letter alphabet letter but it means change in you'll see any of you that's ever had any calculus have seen that or taken physics class have seen it so the change in the momentum which is mass times velocity divided by the time is equal to the force and the force is what you want to accomplish. Now, <clears throat> if you look at the uh, fraction here, this, this long line here, there's a numerator and denominator, that if I, 
And at this bottom part down here, I should have said change in time because the time, the, the time there is actually the, the time elapse. Uh, and I'll explain that a little bit more uh, as I go along here, hopefully. So if I have a, uh, a hammer that's two pounds as opposed to four pounds, then the four pounds is twice the mass. Therefore, I should get twice the force if the velocity and the change in time are constant. If I can take a hammer and increase the velocity, I can increase the force because the numerator is getting larger while the denominator, the change in time, is, is roughly going to be the same. The change in time here in this denominator really is the time it takes the hammer to strike when it first strikes the object that you're hitting, whether it be a piece of metal, a piece of wood, a nail, or a rock. It's the time it takes the hammer to go from whatever velocity it's moving to zero. So it's a very, very short time. Uh, so we'll assume, assume that the time involved here is fairly the same for these hammers when you're striking blows. So the big thing is looking at the change in the mass or the change in the velocity to get a change in the force. I also understand that these hammers are uh, pounds, they're two pounds, four pounds, six pounds, and two eight pounders. I know that pounds is a force unit, uh, and that the, I think the, the uh, mass unit in the old English is called a slug, but you never hear anybody use that. Uh, it is in textbooks if you want to look them up. Sometimes you have to look them up in the uh, tables at the end, but uh, these hammer weights are given in pounds, so the, the poundage is really not the mass of the hammer per se, it's the weight, which is the force of gravity on the metal. So it's the force of gravity times the mass of the metal in each hammer. But since the force of gravity is taking to be the same, because the earth is so much larger than the hammer heads, uh, for all of these hammers, then basically the difference is in the mass uh, is double. The, the, in other words, the weight of a four pound hammer on the earth's surface, the weight of a four pound hammer is, has double the mass of a two pound hammer. Uh, so I can just refer to them as poundage if that's okay. So we have five hammers. I'm going to have to shut this off and adjust the video just a little bit because uh, I want to try to demonstrate or show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, these hammers that I have are <clears throat> go from smallest to largest. This is a two pound hammer. Now this hammer is very useful a lot of times in mechanic work, but it's useful because it's first of all two pound. It's heavy enough to do a little bit of to provide a force but it's light enough to handle with one hand and it has a short handle so you can work in a tight spot. So if you're up under a vehicle in a fender wheel or something trying to drive out a spring bolt when you can only get say uh, eight or ten inches and you want to tap something you can drive out whatever you want with this little hammer. So it works pretty well. Uh, it's just a little heavier, well, it's about twice of a claw hammer. A uh, carpenter's claw hammer quite a lot times are uh, one pound and you can get uh, 20 ounce ones which are called framing hammers but uh, with a claw hammer uh, you're you're using the hammer over and over and over again all day long uh, it gets very tiring this hammer you're not going to be using in that fashion but uh, so you need the two pounds in a tight spot to, to take care of some things uh, this hammer is the same thing it's a four pounder and Notice that <coughs> the difference is I can get this hammer by the end of the handle and, uh, and wield it quite well. This hammer is kind of difficult to hold on the end. It does have a longer handle, that makes it more difficult, but it's twice the mass. So it's more comfortable for me to grab it somewhere around here. Uh, that's a four pound hammer. So when you have to start doing this and cheating on it, it's showing you that uh, it basically to use this thing effectively, it's a two pounder. 
Now, th this is a nice hammer. It's uh, adequate. It's four pounds, so you can affect quite a bit of force. And if you grasp it with both hands and working in a tight spot, notice that this hammer I can wield in front of me while I'm pounding on something, and this handle is not in the way. If I took this big hammer out here, I notice where the handle is now behind me? I, I can't really maneuver. It's very cumbersome. So that hammer is not made for close work. Where this hammer is, it's a four pounder. This is a six pounder. It has a short handle for the same reason. Uh, you can get, uh, well, 33% more force. It's a, a six pound instead of four. So you can get uh, more, a third more mass will give you a third more force. And this short handled hammer is an eight pounder. And it, you get something heavier than that, it, gets start, it starts getting hard to pick up. But this eight pounder also has a handle that I can work in front of me. And notice too that I can put more distance between my hands, it changes your leverage. So you can work this hammer quite effectively in a tight spot. The hammer on the end has a, a three foot handle on it. <laughs> this hammer is not made for close work uh, unless you just have to try to use it. It's much better to use the other one. This one is a stand up hammer where you want to stand up and bring the hammer up over your shoulder and strike down. Uh, with this hammer, it being eight pound, you have the same mass as a short handled hammer, plus with the longer handle, you get more of an arc, so you can pick up more velocity, which provides more force. So when you're using hammers, I can take this little hammer and hit this rock and break it. Notice it's a uh, bigger rock, it's having trouble. So the old saying is, if it doesn't fit, get a bigger hammer. So we can get a four pound hammer and notice how it shattered that thing into five different pieces. And this one, now I'll get my, I'll skip the six. So this is a six pounder. I can get this six pounder. Let's skip on up and get the eight. The eight pounder, will take care of the bigger rocks. So the old adage that if it doesn't fit, get a bigger hammer, sometimes is true. Now a couple of things uh, I wanted to mention before I ended this video is this hammer is eight pound. It has twice the mass of the four pounder. So when both hammers strike, you're going to get twice the force, as I showed you in that equation a while ago. So you get uh, better effective use of uh, your energy. It does take more work to pick this hammer up. It's harder to pick up in the air. But it's not something that a human can't do quite readily. Uh, this, one, this one is quite easy to pick up and down. But again, you don't get near the force when you strike this thing. Also, it's, I don't guess it's that much, but you have, when this hammer is coming down, you're going to get uh, a better velocity because you can pull on it more. You're pulling down on this, on this mass. Uh, this one you can maybe work it faster or greater velocity, but it's not enough to make a difference. The double of the mass gives you double the force. And that's what you want. One other thing about these hammers is when you're using hammers and you're striking a subst uh, substance or object, whatever, being a rock this time, if if you take the hammer and come down, and when you hit this rock, you, you don't want to keep pushing down on it. You don't want to push down. You want to, don't let go of it, but release 
the muscles in here. Don't push, push on it. Let it bounce back because when the hammer bounces back, when you're letting it bounce back, the rock has to push it backwards in the opposite direction. And since momentum change in velocity, mass times velocity, the velocity is a vector. So when the uh, hammer strikes the object, it's going one direction, mass times velocity. And if it bounces back off of the rock, it's got a mass times velocity going the other direction. And the rock is what's imparting that velocity so you increase the momentum and when you increase the momentum you increase the change in momentum since it's a change in direction it's a change in momentum so you get an even greater force so when you strike the object you don't want to take your muscles and try to shove the hammer through the rock you want to let it come back off the rock if you can